Hi there, welcome back to another edition of uh, Ranch Talk Live. We are currently situated inside the clone of cleanliness. Uh, I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas. It has been like a tornado has ran through the house and Aaron has been twitching for yeah, days. That makes me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't expect the house to be like clean all the time. Like we have three kids, it's impossible. I've given up like long ago on everything being put away, but when the entire house is destroyed, like, and it's been days, I do, like, I twitch. It makes me crazy. <laughs> so. The, uh, obviously, if you have kids, you know how they like to migrate toys from one area to the next. And <laughs> we've been slowly moving Christmas into, into their bedrooms. And it keeps coming out. It, keep, it does keep coming <laughs> out. But slowly, we've been working it that way. Again, I hope you had a, a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and all that good stuff. Um, we are expecting a light load tonight with uh, with viewers just because it is right after Christmas. A lot of people still t spending time uh, with their families and stuff like that. You might notice that uh, one of our moderators, Matt, is actually missing. Uh, Matt suffered a death in the family yesterday, so he is not going to be here tonight, but uh, he is in our, our thoughts and our prayers. So They also had a birth in the family. They had a birth you? in the family, then they had a death in the family. So yeah. congratulations to Matt. He has a new grandbaby mm -hmm. um, on Monday new grandbaby. Was it Monday? Yeah. Yeah. It was Christmas Eve, right? Yeah. 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 It exactly. seems like a million years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas I've Eve. I've also been stuck in this like time vortex inside the house with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been snowing and cold and crappy. So we haven't been able to get outside and do a whole lot with the kids. So yeah, it's been very much, uh, here's your Christmas toys, play with them as much as possible. Uh, well, they've been having a great time. They so. have been. Yeah. It's just been, uh, it's been, it's been a little bit, uh, I feel closed in. Yeah, like claustrophobic kind of a little bit. You need to like <laughs> escape and just go to town for nothing. But I don't want to go because it's crappy outside. Yeah, it is. The roads are slick and, <laughs> and everything else. So anyway, I want to thank a couple uh, new faces that we see here. Uh, Patrick McLean, thanks for coming out tonight. April Lewis. Uh, Fiona, of course, who's here almost every live stream. If you are catching this on the replay, um, you can join us live. You can chat with us live every other Thursday, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. We're right here and uh, you can catch us live but thanks for watching the replay as well so mm -hmm. um we've been getting snow what the last two days but we're not getting the, the full brunt that they're getting like in wisconsin and and you know they've had up over a foot in some areas yeah. already uh it has been i hate to whine because now i feel bad i just said somebody got a foot of snow and then i'm gonna be like we got three inches and i my boots were wet it, it was horrible it horrible. was gorgeous christmas eve and christmas day <laughs> yeah like seriously super gorgeous we opened presents christmas eve and i think i even like ran back and forth to the shop to like wrap presents and bring presents back to the house with no coat on yeah like that's how nice it was and yeah yesterday and today it's been snowy and yesterday it started out just snowing but no wind and now the wind has picked up i think our wind chills are supposed to be below zero the next couple of days and yeah. um, i just took the kids up to grammys and yeah i mean there's it's drifting <laughs> so you know it's six inches in some spots and nothing in other spots right. but yeah it's cold and nasty out so um quick question that i saw come back from jesus is what's going on with the podcast um last week we missed the podcast because of christmas and the the hectic stuff that was going oh, on yes. there and we actually missed one before that because of my my tooth issue so that the podcast has been a little bit sporadic we are hoping to get back on our schedule with that uh life happens folks it's just one of those things that it uh, doesn't matter what you're doing, uh, whether you are you have a YouTube channel or you got to get to work on Thursday. Uh, life happens sometimes. You get flat tires, and we've had a flat tire with the podcast here lately. The podcast yeah, was, train has been running on the wrong track. It'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we were busy last Friday. Like, just uh, kids got out of school. I sold shopping to finish up. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was wrapping presents. I swear I started shopping early, and it comes down to, like, the last minute, and I was still not done. Well, and you had... Presents delivered Monday. We we're like, come yeah. on, UPS. Yeah, we're like, UPS is going to be here at some point today. <laughs> so I did have, yeah, it was kind of a, it was it was a little bit of a, a hectic weekend, yeah. but we didn't make it through. Um, quick, here's our plan for the podcast tonight, or podcast live stream tonight. I'm on the podcast thing. Uh, live stream tonight is going to consist of we've got we have a good mail call to go through. 
But really, we want you guys to kind of run this thing for us. If you have questions, feel free to throw them up. We would love to answer your questions as we move along through this thing. Sometimes we get off on a tangent. Somebody just whistle, bring us on back. So I did see a question about uh, how the cows handle the cold. So it depends. It depends on how cold it is, wind chill, stuff like that. They do have shelter they can go into, so they do Which uh, they do hide a lot in there, and they wait for me to come and feed them, and then they come out and eat, and then they go back in. So it's uh, it's not too bad. They're pretty. Uh, they're fine. They're pretty thick skin they're, they're when not, it comes to cold weather. Yeah, they're better than I am about it. Yeah, I mean they've got fur, and like they're made out of leather. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and hooves don't get frostbite and I mean they're built for cold weather and the winds coming out of the north and our three-sided shelter protects them from the north mm -hmm. so they're perfectly fine right now yeah so. exactly we did have what was the temperature here on on Christmas it was like in the 50s on Christmas was wasn't 40s it 40s at least. at least it was nice now it's totally turned around but the cows don't notice they got an extra mail on Christmas so that makes them feel good so did they tell you Merry Christmas do they tell me Merry they don't care they're like hey extra bail put it out man <laughs> They just see me coming with an extra bail, and they're just like, woohoo, whose birthday is it? Whose birthday? <laughs> we have a lot of birthdays in April and May. Uh, let's see, uh, sheetrock. Sheetrock is not my best friend. <laughs> You're making progress. I am making progress. Pretty soon, hopefully, we will actually be moving this enterprise upstairs. We have, we're have we building a small, uh, basically a studio that the kids can't come in and, and uh, like there's go, no live, go live. There's, there's, no, there's boundaries no boundaries in this house. But uh, I'm always afraid, like when we leave, so when we get done with our with our live stream tonight, um, we'll actually leave all of our junk set up. Yeah, that drives me crazy. Too. And uh, I'm always afraid <laughs> one of the kids is going to come in and push the button to go live. And then you'll see Mackenzie sitting here just, you know, playing with her toys or watching TV or whatever. And yeah. Hear us in the background. She Horrible. wants a gaming channel. So she does she want just, a gaming channel. She just practice. She's all about that gaming <laughs> channel thing. Um, speaking of uh, drywall, I did actually put together a, uh, a little clip of drywall. If anybody would be interested in watching it, I can uh, fire it up. That little bit that you can see of it there, that's going to be the new uh, office, basically. Yeah. Because get us out of our bedroom and moved up there. And, uh, yeah, I looked a little bit like Casper. It's, <laughs> and it's not just somebody the first day. That's, a, like, what, two days of this already that I've been going through, this sanding ordeal. And Somebody on Instagram said you look like a clown. I look like a clown, like a rodeo <laughs> clown, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just, I'm not a huge fan of drywall. I just, uh, I, don't, is I actually don't mind... Sanding it is horrible. Well, that's but, obviously the you know, worst. <laughs> yeah, you have to build walls, so that's kind of uh, something you have to deal with. And I, you know, I've got friends of mine. They're like, "Hey, I'm going to come over and help you sand." When you're done sanding, I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, no, they know just as much. Tomorrow we got to clean it up so we can. Uh, last coat goes on. Tomorrow. Yeah, last coat of mud, and then uh, and then we start uh, primer, texture, paint, carpet furniture. Oh no, I'm going to finish the electrical, then furniture. We're a few weeks out still. Door. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's lots of stuff to be done. Thank you, Ralph, for the super chat. Thank you. Um, yeah, feed money in 2019. Hopefully, we're, we're really hoping, hoping for, uh, um, for rain in 2019. We had a wet late summer and fall and winter hasn't been super dry or anything the snow mm. today is super dry like, yeah there's no moisture in the snow today, well, and, and, but... and the winter snow really doesn't help us that much when it does come to moisture because the ground's frozen so all of that actually becomes most of it becomes runoff yeah unless we get a really late snowstorm and those are really wet and heavy and the ground is already thawed then it'll go then all that moisture goes into the ground so yeah. just kind of depends on the take, timing the ground is finally frozen but it did take quite a while for the ground to freeze this fall we had a lot of it was cold and then warm and then um i mean we've had mud we've had some muddy muddy wet, springs muddy, muddy fall yeah so now that it's officially winter that so confuses mackenzie the seasons <laughs> well like when it snows and it's still fall or <laughs> when it, we hit spring and when do we hit spring? March? 
Yeah. Is it March? She'll be like, why is it still snowing? <laughs> <laughs> Spring? Yeah, I'm sometimes wondering the same thing. Sometimes the timing doesn't work out well. No. Thank you, Kyle, for another super chat. Uh, what do you feed your cattle for grain, and does it differ from what you feed them in the summer? Uh, the only cattle around here that are going to get grain are cattle that we're actually finishing to butcher. Uh, those are our steers that we keep back. They will receive a mixture of corn, oats, and barley for the last about 90 days. Um, that kind of brings in that marbling and, and some fat and stuff like that into the meat. Those will actually go to be butchered, and then we sell that meat directly to uh, local customers. So We're going to start graining soon. We do. I want to start around the first. Uh, another one from Ivan. Uh, more mud, more sanding. Yeah, no doubt. Um, they are in oh New Mexico. Snowing hard here. Half an inch in the last 45 minutes. Merry Christmas. Well, thank you, Ivan. Thank you. And I'm, I'm going to mess up your, your wife's name. Can you try it? Because I always mess it up whenever I try to tell Aaron, too. And it's it's Eulena. You, yeah. Eulena, I think. Is what it is. <laughs> thank you, uh, guys. Those guys are actually over-the-road truckers. They've stopped here and, and hung out with us for a little bit, which was very cool. So uh, if you see any questions you want to, just holler. Okay. Just grab them and holler at me because uh, I think I still have drywall dust somewhere in my <laughs> face because... It just kind of has me stuffed up. All over the house. <laughs> uh, Jam's Farm, uh, thank you for the super chat. Buy those kids some candy on me. Yeah, oh I'm going <laughs> to wait until the Christmas candy runs out from Santa, and then I'll get get them some more candy. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> the candy's been going like crazy. And, and Aaron puts candy in stockings. Or Santa puts candy in stockings. Sorry. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> they, uh, they end up going through that There's pretty kids quick. kids that watch. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, can you explain how this is from uh, J.B. Well? Can you explain how El Nino and El Nina uh, affect uh, weather and ranch for hay? That's a darn good question. Um, we should pay more attention to that. We probably should because there is... What the hell? <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> that's nice. A sock there for you guys. Uh, <laughs> I, threw, I actually threw this shirt in the dryer because uh, it was a little bit wrinkly. So... <laughs> <laughs> yep, we're we're classy folks. And this I had that happen to me the other day with a pair of pants. It was a sock like behind my knee. I literally wore them for a good like two hours before I was like, something doesn't feel right. <laughs> a sock. Does that ever happen to you guys? <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, raise your hand if uh, if you have a sock stuck in your sleeve right now. Sorry about that, guys. This is why we're never going to be on regular TV. <laughs> oh, Somebody is going to be like, no, never going to happen, which is fine with me. So <laughs> at least it wasn't underwear. <laughs> mm. Wait a minute. Went, Hold on. <laughs> shoves that back up there and just been uncomfortable. Like, I don't know what that is, but it says Hanes on it. That's just going to stay in there. Uh, <laughs> anyway, sorry about that. Uh, we were talking about uh, El Nino, and, and uh, honestly, that is a really good question. Maybe something worth tracking and going back. I can't give you an answer right off the top of my head, uh, but it's worth it's worth a video number one. Oh, yeah, you can do some and it's worth uh, it's worth if I can get a hold of a weatherman. If I, first of all, if, if I could put a weather person in a video, um, that would be awesome because then I could just sit and thump them on the head all day long. I would like to meet. A new, a, I, I knew I knew a few weather guys when I worked in radio, uh -huh. and at the time I didn't care as much about weather. Now that I do yeah. really care about weather, I really wish that I had them right next to me half the time I'm in the tractor. Weather guessers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there, I haven't told you how to say it. Juliana. Juliana, there we go. You didn't have to pay me two bucks to tell me. I'll, I'll give you two bucks next time you stop by. <laughs> I probably owe you. $2 off your next steak. Yeah, I mean, so when you get the El, El Nino. And La Nina. That's, the, that's when you get the wet weather, right? I don't know. Somebody's going to have to correct me on that. I have kind of looked at it a little bit, but it's just uh, it's just something that has to be. Hey, what's the update on preg checking? What is the update on preg checking? Kyle. If our vet is watching... Call us. Call us. I'm actually fairly certain that he's waiting on weather to break, to do it, and not holidays and everything else. Um, <laughs> the cows are going to be calving. <laughs> yeah. We're going to break truck. Yeah, they might be. The bad thing oh, about... Oh, La Nina is what? La Nina is the wet one? Isn't there one coming? Aren't we supposed Well, that's to? the point. Yeah, let's get back to that. Isn't there? Isn't there one? It's changing, correct? I don't know. Okay. I'm not a weather man, really. Kenzie is our weather person, oddly enough. She even got a weather chart for Christmas because she's obsessed with the weather. So yeah. she can move, move little magnets Maybe around. Maybe that's a video for Mackenzie. She can do a weather uh, video. There's a storm coming oh, yeah. when there's one cloud in the sky. Is that a tornado? 
No. Dang J House and their tornado. <laughs> uh, from Kyle, you guys helped me start my farm. Wow, that's oh, thanks, amazing. Kyle. I'm glad that you were able to do that. That's amazing. Did you get a new hat? I well, I got a new hat what? A few months ago. This is, this nice is my hat. nice go to church. Um, go to town. Well, not really go to town because usually I don't think about changing my hat when I go to town. Go to church. Uh, do live stream. Yeah. So. You got a new shirt for Christmas. I did. I got a new shirt for Christmas. It comes with a free sock. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, the weather thing is just, yeah, it uh, depends on how where you're at in the country. That's very true, probably. So, oh, Jam's Farm is a storm chaser in Kentucky. We get some storm chasers up here once in a while during summer. We never get the cool ones, though. I want to see the guy in the tank, you know, and all those cool trucks that they have on TV sometimes. But I think they've been up here. I've never seen them. Really? But I've seen, like, footage. This year, them. we had a, a ridiculous amount of tornadoes in yeah. the state. In fact, when I was talking to... Who was I talking to? I can't remember who I was talking to. But I was talking to somebody <laughs> about uh, all the tornadoes that we've had this year. and uh, Well, last summer. Last summer, yeah. It's and not I mean, we had, like, season. like some up there pretty high in the... In the scale, some big ones yeah, down like by Laramie, Cheyenne. We had one go through a town north of town. Yeah. Uh, took out a small community out there. So it's been a weird year, that's for sure. Yeah. All right. So if someone can, you know, send us an email and explain El Nino and La Nina, we should probably Google that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I. Where'd you get the drop cords that you plug all the chargers in at? My mother-in-law, I stole it from her. Uh, <laughs> we have to ask her. I'm pretty sure it's like a it's like a Christmas light. Um, Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Extension cord. Because it has a, a separate plug-in like every few feet. And I think she bought it for Christmas lights in Years town. Yeah. And then I swiped it because I needed an extension cord. Home Depot, maybe? I don't know where she got it. It'd be Q a good question QB to ask her. QVC? QVC, maybe. Could have been. Hopefully your mom's not watching. <laughs> uh, that was a good QVC purchase. <laughs> yeah. Uh, feel free to smack that uh, that like button there. That really does actually help us out. I have a video that I'm working on um, about uh, how social media actually, what we've learned about how social media works, and it's stupid and it's ridiculous. But one of the things is that pushing that like button really does help. Uh, the more that you guys like videos, the more that you guys watch videos, the more our videos get suggested to other people, which might be the way that you found us in the first place, and help spread the word that way. So if you can smash that like button, uh, that would be awesome for us. Um, Do you still have the pigs? Yes. The pigs are still there. They're, naughty. They are naughty. They're keep naughty, climbing naughty in the water tank. <laughs> the water tank is actually, i got to rework it because we got to raise it up now because they've gotten too big. So they climb in the water and then they take a bath and then I have to pump it out and then I have to put new water in. It's a giant pain. This is so, like our, what, fourth or fifth round of pigs. Like you'd think we'd get it figured out by now, but like water and pigs is It's like a disaster. fire and water. Like, yeah, you it's just can't put them together. Like one, they don't work together. So. You need to give them like a sippy cup every day. Like mm -hmm. one sippy cup. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so one thing I do want to talk about and uh, is something that happened here in the last week uh, that really did bring us down. Uh, and it's probably going to bring everybody else down too, but I want to get it out of the way, um, is the fact that the peacock did pass away. Um, he was living in the in the shop, um, having a fine old time, and apparently uh, he was older anyway when we got him. Uh, I don't know how long We don't know lived. how old he was, but he was probably, we figured just by the maturity of his tail that he was around four or five years old when we got him, and that's been... Oh, six, six or seven six years. Six years, yeah, seven, seven years, years ago we got him. Yeah. So, yeah, he uh, he just kind of um, kind of fell over. I mean, he just uh, gave up the ghost. Yeah, so, and he, I mean, this last year has been. It's been really hard on him this last year. I think uh, you know he's done a lot of pretty much just kind of living indoors and and hanging out. And I you know I really hate to say that it's it's better for him this way. Um, you know, we did everything that we could for him for the longest, uh, longest time, mm -hmm. um, but and tried to keep him as comfortable and he was walking around using his leg and stuff like that. But, uh, I, I, I did think feel like the last month or so, like his, his quality of life was kind of declining. Like he was moving around less and he was just more sedentary and just, um, not him, not himself. Like, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's. It's a huge loss for us, and I, you know, I appreciate that we gave him another year of life that he wouldn't have had, um, you right. know, after his his foot got frostbit and stuff. Um, it, it's it's sad. It's as with animals, always like 
there's losses and um, the kids, it, it's a new opportunity for us to move on. I always worried about bringing other peacocks and he was lonely too. Mm. Um, I, I couldn't, I didn't feel like I could bring in other peacocks because of his leg and stuff that they would be aggressive towards him and potentially pick on him. Um, and he wouldn't be able to keep up with them because even though he could walk around and he would go outside, he wasn't as mobile even with his fake leg, which was great compared to no leg. Right. But there was also the issue of that we had to bring him in every night, close mm -hmm. him up, which he didn't like. Um, you know, you couldn't let him do his like free range thing because yeah. of predators and stuff like that. So it's very, uh, it was very sad when it happened. And uh, unfortunately, Mackenzie's the one that found him. So we had to deal with that. And uh, yeah, it was just kind of a, a messy it's, situation. It, but. It's it's sad. I'm super sad that he was gone. It was pretty devastating for us for a couple of days. Um, spring's right around the corner, and um, we're going to find new peacocks. Mm -hmm. And if I have to bite the bullet and order expensive peacock, I, I think I might order some chicks. They're super expensive. Um, and I've never done it. I've always just found peacocks like around here and stuff, which we might still do that. But I think to raise some chicks from chicks, <laughs> from little tiny <laughs> peacock chicks would be really fun. And... Um, I think the kids would really enjoy that. And he was super tame always from the get-go, but I think it would be fun to raise them from scratch <laughs> and uh, really have them be super tame. I don't know. I don't know if I want to lap Peacock. He was he was friendly, but he was friendly to the point to where he didn't really care. You know, like, yeah. you could walk into the room, you could walk by him, the dog could walk, he didn't care. Yeah. Um, but, uh, he, you know, he didn't jump in your lap and want to sit with you like a stupid No, but he something. was, like, before he lost his foot and stuff, like, he was super social. Like, mm -hmm. he would follow us, like, he'd follow me in the high tunnel, and, like, when we were out garden, like, when I was out gardening, he'd come and, like, not so much hang out in the gardens with us. I didn't want that. Like, I would chase him out of the high tunnel because he'd eat tomatoes and stuff. But he was always just, um, he'd kind of follow us around like a dog in the yeah. summertime and stuff. So, um, yeah, I think... I, I think we'll get some chicks. So your plan is to get more peacocks? Yeah, no, absolutely. We're going to get yeah. more peacocks. So I love them. They're so beautiful, and, and I love birds. And I, yeah, we're going to have more peacocks. So. Um, Lori asked how the kids are taking it. Um, they were okay. Mackenzie was a little, she was pretty freaked out for a little while. We ended up, uh, uh, we were actually, sadly enough, we were out filming at the time. And uh, she found the peacock and... Came back inside and had, you know, a good cry and all that kind of stuff. And then um, then she said, let's go back to work. So she yeah, came back out with me and um, finished chores. So. You know, it is, we talked to them a lot about, you know, like, this is the first year we didn't let Kenzie keep back um, Bambi's calf. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, this is, it is, I feel, you know, I wasn't raised on the ranch and stuff, so I didn't have to deal with an animal loss when I was a kid. But it's part of it, and they're gonna have to suck it up, and you know, like this is—it's so harsh, but like, yeah, it, it is. They're gonna have to deal with it, and, uh, and like even a couple of years ago, we have already had the conversation of you know this bacon came from the pigs, and mm -hmm. that you played with when they were piglets, and um, I think farm kids are a little desensitized to that. But she was super sad. Um, yeah, I mean, we had a couple of days of pretty rough, but. They're excited for more peacocks in the spring. Right. So. Yeah. And we did explain that to them. So, start an ostrich farm. No, thank you, William. Um, I, I don't mean, know. I have seen ostriches. <laughs> here, here, go, go search on YouTube for ostriches fighting, and, and they, they can kick the crap out of somebody. I mean, I don't even know how you would deal with them. So. Yeah, no. <laughs> we'll stick to smaller birds. Yeah. When we first got the peacock, like, we've had geese and ducks and chickens, obviously. Mm -hmm. But um, I remember, like... How much bigger he was than any other bird that we've ever had and i'm just like he's huge um you know so i think peacocks are probably about the biggest bird i i would if i could have a flamingo like that would be awesome i love <laughs> would flamingos. a flamingo live here well they live in denver in the zoo but i think they well go yeah but they, they, they go denver. inside yeah. and like they have caretakers yeah <laughs> you know? they have somebody to throw a blanket plus on i them. don't have an endless supply of shrimp for them. <laughs> uh, the, the, when we go to zoos, though, the um, flamingos are like my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Uh, from uh, Chase, uh, why do you use a FLIR thermal camera? Uh, well, there's a story behind that. And if you've watched the FLIR video, uh, when I was in the military, we used FLIR uh, thermal imaging all the time for search and rescue. And uh, last year, we were out here on the ranch getting ready to start calving, and I got to thinking about uh, the fact that, you know, sometimes you can't find calves laying out in the snow. They're laying in the sagebrush. Uh, you can, you know, when you're calving inside a 400-acre area, you can drive by them four times and not even realize Four it. times. More like 40 times. <laughs> yeah. We've literally searched 
like quadrants of the ranch for hours mm -hmm. looking for a calf with a cow helping us. And yeah, we still the cow's can. looking for the calf and we <laughs> still can't find it. Um, the thermal integer actually really does come in handy. I keep it in the gator all the time. It's, it's with me all the time. It's always charged up. And uh, I can go out and I can search for calves. I can search for cows um, that are missing. I can search for uh, predators, any other wildlife that might be running around. Uh, Aaron takes off and runs through the field. I can, I can track her down. <laughs> bring her back <laughs> sometimes dragging her by her hair uh, yeah uh cory yes ducks and geese are messy the peacock was messy too uh yeah, yeah. pelican um, there we go go man get a pelican i don't have any fish <laughs> there's no fish here but i see bald eagles here all the time and i thought they ate fish but apparently they're Don't eating they whatever they can find too? yeah they can feed they um, whatever they can find. i've never had guineas caleb i don't think i'll get guineas they're noisy. I mean, the peacocks. A lot of people too. put guineas in their gardens, don't they? Is that the one that eats all the bugs but won't eat the plants? Yeah, I don't believe that. But, you know, I've never had them. So, uh, yeah, they are good for, like, bug control and I think, like, snake control, too. Yeah. Um, we don't have a lot of snakes right around the house. They eat small dogs. Guineas eat small dogs? Maybe bald eagles oh. eat small dogs. <laughs> <I was gonna laughs> <say. laughs> for the record, I don't drag Erin by her hair at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeanette says they are noisy. Yeah, that's I've been around them. I've never had. Oh, for snakes, they eat snakes. Yeah. there you go. I knew they ate something. Of course, chickens eat snakes. You ever seen a chicken go off on a snake? And mice. Oh my god, and mice. Yeah. Mouse flavored eggs the next day. <laughs> um, oh, we don't have a lot of ticks here, Doug. Um, Thankfully. Yeah, we uh. I mean, I, I get a few ticks in the garden, but... But they're not on us. You see them. Yeah. I've never... I don't think I've ever had a tick on me the whole time we've lived here. No. I sometimes bring them in the house. I find them in the house once in a great, great while. All right. But, they you just know. hit your ride on your clothes? Yeah, I think so. Nice. Woo! Yeah, guineas are annoying. Like, when I've been around them, it's like, oof, yeah, not so much my thing, so... <laughs> There's like a guinea war going on now, too. <laughs> I hate those things. And, yeah. Um... How long does a cow stay pregnant till they give birth? Nine months. Same as us. Well, same as Aaron, so not me. Two, extra two weeks or something? Yeah, it's, it's pretty close. It's like 242 weeks. days or something like that, if I remember right. Yeah. So we call it nine months. So, All right. Uh, we're cut. Well, actually, we still have like three minutes before we have to do a uh, mail call. So any other questions you want to hit on? I'm reading. I, actually, uh, I don't want a pigeon, Tony. Thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> What's that other bird that we get here? Uh, the seagulls. We get seagulls here every once in a while in town. They're not seagulls. What are they? I don't know what they are. They're like the parking lot <laughs> seagulls. Parking lot seagull. <laughs> flying pigeon, flying rats, <laughs> pretty much what they are. Um, we get killdeer. They're little annoying birds that run on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and we get blue cranes in the summer. We do get cranes. That would be kind of a Just cool a couple. bird to have. Have a pet crane. We don't see those in any of the catalogs from the hatcheries. <laughs> so, what I would love, except for we have predators, is uh, black swans. Oh my gosh! The, you they're know so cost? They're yeah. so expensive, but they're so pretty. Yeah. What? What? How much do they cost? You know? I'm um, like, I think a pair is like fifteen hundred bucks or twelve hundred dollars. And I guarantee you, the first day we let them outside, oh, yeah, no, a fox get, would eat it. Yeah, Boom! Some, just like that. Somebody so. would get eaten in a heartbeat, or they'd fly away. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you could clip their wings, but. Um, JB Weld, thank you for the ten dollars. Um, saving for small base and up operation upstate New York. At what point herd size does in house processing remain cost effective? That's a good question. We actually can't do in house processing here because we sell our beef um, at farmers markets and stuff like that, so it has to be USDA inspected. So that's something I've never actually had to dig into is in house processing. And it, you know, the laws are going to differ differ state by yeah. state. So you know, some states you can, some states you can't. Um, yeah, you're gonna have to check, I honestly check your state regulations. They might limit how many you can process too. Um, you know, you can butcher 999 chickens a year and sell them. In Wyoming? No, that's federal. Oh, that's federal. Yeah. Oh, it's the USD poultry exemption. I have no idea what. Yeah, you're gonna have to look into it. <laughs> Aaron knows about chickens. <laughs> um, I know about farmers market regulations. Mm -hmm. um, is your children going to show cattle with 4-H or FFA? Yeah, when they're old enough. Um, Kenzie can join 4-H next year. Yeah, her birthday is But she's not going to start so. with a steer. No. 
Like, no. she can get a chicken. <laughs> or she can Just pick go a, grab a chicken. She can pick a chicken from the chicken coop <laughs> kind yeah. of deal. So, uh, but yeah, the kids will do 4-H and FFA when they're, I don't know if they'll do FFA. That's going to be up to them, but mm -hmm. they'll do 4-H. So. Um, Colby wants to know if we ever, if we have any ranch hands. Do you have a ranch hand? I wish. Yeah, I don't no. have a ranch hand either. Not <laughs> at this point. Uh, it might be something that comes up next year. We'll see. Um, 2019 could be a whole new year for us. We don't know. But, but well, it's going to be a whole new year. Could be a you know a game changer, <laughs> what I should be saying. Um, yeah. But no ranch hands at this moment. So yeah, we could do forage with peacock. I always feel so bad for the geese and stuff like in the little cages at fair. Yeah, well that's all I got. Why not? You can't let them run around. No, they're messy. <laughs> um, Mike is Aaron's ranch hand. Yeah, kind of. Kinda. Uh, times, yeah. Frog seven four three. I don't have a greenhouse. I have two high tunnels. Mm -hmm. um, we we refer to them as greenhouses sometimes. Um, greenhouses have two layers of plastic, and there's a fan that pumps air between the two layers, so you get a little air insulation bubble. Um, our high tunnels are just single layer plastic, but essentially the frame is the same. Greenhouses often come with um, cooling and heating systems. High tunnel has nothing. Mm -hmm. So. All right, somebody reminds me it's 7.31. That means it's time for... That would be mail call. You're going to throw the bag at yourself? Again, um, right? Shush, you don't make fun. Okay, first of all, we're going to start out mail call with this. Um, we do have a list of uh, license plates. Now, rather oh than gosh, sit here and show so you license, license plates, plates. Uh, we thought we'd just, uh, we'd just read off some names here for you. And if anybody wondering what the hell I'm doing with license plates is we're putting them on the wall around the project list. Um, it was Aaron's idea, actually. Genius. Genius. It's coming uh, along nicely, the wall is. Actually, Ivan and his wife, and I'm going to screw this up again. Oh, Juliana. Juliana. Uh, dropped by. They gave me a license plate from Tennessee. I put that on the wall, and Aaron came down to the shop and said we should do more, more of this. So uh, this week we received license plates from the uh, Williamson's in Vermont, the Adanks in, uh, in Wisconsin, R.W. Allen in Illinois, the Belts family in Wisconsin, Les in Wisconsin, uh, Picors in Indiana, uh, David and Phyllis in Kansas, John in Naperville, Illinois. I've been to Naperville. Very nice. I had, I had a really good pizza there one time. Um, uh, the Schroeders in Minnesota, uh, John in North Carolina, Josh. Josh. Oh, Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer in North Carolina. Uh, from, I can't read my own writing. Uh, Kevin in Alberta. The uh, the Bostics in Indiana. Wayne Blake in Cheyenne. Mensels in North Carolina. And the Rushes in North Carolina. So. If we missed you, we're sorry. Yeah, there's been a ton of... The P.O. Plates. Box was yesterday when I checked. And you checked on Monday. And yeah. I went yesterday. Could not fit another thing in there. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It was. All right, mail call. Thank See, you guys for the this license is mail plate. Call. These are my saddlebags. I'm still trying to come up with a way to launch them in myself. Lincoln catapult. Small one. Not nice. Okay. Um, from, uh, oh, this is from the Bostics. They sent a license plate as well, but they also sent us a bunch of other stuff. Uh, pen and pencil sets for the kids. Okay. And uh, soaps for Aaron. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I didn't look at this. And a nice letter. Oh. Are these homemade soaps? I believe they are. Um, Contains all natural ingredients. Thank since you. Mike got the license plate, we couldn't uh, forget something for Aaron. I use Young Living essential oils and make a variety of chemical items. Chemical items. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Uh, I know being cows. a mom, wife, and farmer, rancher is stressful, and I sent you some homemade soap and chapstick. Look, they're little cows. They are little cows. That's cute. For a minute. <laughs> Thank you. It's been the week for books. Hey, um, I've got a, a book, and I can't, this is from. Uh, I think there's a name on it. No, there is not. Uh, hi, Mike. Love your YouTube channel. Your hay costs pay me, though. Here's a small gift I hope delivers huge rewards. Uh, 
They pain us too. What's that? They pain us too. They pain us too. <laughs> kick, uh, kick the hay habit. Uh, I've actually read part of this book uh, on uh, basically how to graze year round. If you have grass to graze year round, you can do that. And no snow. No, well, yeah, clearing snow for cows is fun. Uh, overseas. Thank you for the book, though. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, overseas package from somewhere. They don't remember. Coaster. A coaster. It's a sheep. Here's an interesting thing that I would love to know. Happy Christmas is a British thing. I've heard this a few times. It's not Merry Christmas. It's Happy Christmas. So. I'm trying to read this. See where it came from. Oh, I know where it's from. There's a. Uh, Kendall Cumbria. Cumbria. Where's Cumbria? I should have looked that up. <laughs> uh, calendar. Yeah, they send a okay. calendar. Thank calendar. you. Very cool. And a magazine. And a magazine on farm machinery. Oh. Yeah. Lincoln will like that. Lincoln will love that. Um, another book. Oh, these are from the Williamsons. And a bunch of stuff. Oh yeah, they sent cards and notes and... Yeah, very cool. A uh, book on um, get puppy training, because Aaron wants a puppy at some point. <laughs> you want a puppy too. Christmas cards, notes, and and actually, to tell you the truth, we did receive a ton of Christmas cards. And if you send us a Christmas card, we really do appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, they all ended up, besides these two, for some weird reason, ended up in our living room on the wall. Yeah. So I should have taken a picture of that, but I did not. So let's get a mail call for today. Thank you guys for uh, everything. Oh, if somebody sent two LOL dolls for the kids and a Paw Patrol ornament for Lincoln, could you let us know because it came from Amazon and I don't know who it came from. It could have came from my aunt. I need to ask. But, yeah, there's no note in it or anything. It came direct from Amazon. But thank you if you sent toys for the kids. Yeah, we did get a few random packages that uh, uh, don't have names on them and that kind of thing. So if we don't know who they're from, but... Thank but you we very thank much. you. So, yeah. All right. My eyes are itchy from uh, drywall dust. Yeah, you're going to be okay. I'm going to be fine. <laughs> uh, when do you have time to read? Yeah, that's a good point. I was actually thinking about that today. I was out. Uh, Can you get an audio book? That's, that's what I thought. I said, if, you, if you're going to send me a book, send me an audio book. So that actually, that's, when I, that's what I do. Usually yeah. when we're hanging, uh, sometimes when I'm feeding, not very often, but... Uh, uh, throughout the day, depends on what else what else I got going on. So I do uh, I do the audio. Have your book. taxes done? No. Have your taxes done? We just got our 2017 taxes done a couple months ago. <laughs> like, let's not be too ambitious here. Um, the accountant has uh, our QuickBooks, so I didn't call with questions today. <laughs> that is a good thing. Do you, do you like audiobooks more, yeah. better than real books? I mean, real books, but no, like, I like, like real. I mean, so I don't read. I love to read, but I don't. I don't buy books, paper books anymore. I read on my iPad a lot. So um, you buy the books on your iPad? Yeah. Um, do you like reading on the iPad? I do. Is it better than? I mean, you think no, it's like having a physical book. Besides, have or now you have a screen. Yeah. Was there like a? Like an adjustment process yeah, I mean, to that? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing I love, though, is, like, I can read at nighttime while you're asleep, and it doesn't bother you. No. I don't have to have a light on. So sure. I like I like ebooks and stuff. Um, I haven't bought, like, a paper book for years. And I like audiobooks. Like, I listen to audiobooks a lot in the summertime. I buy a ton of books for the kids. So many books. They don't get audiobooks. No. A boring <laughs> audiobook. What a great job, though, to be that audiobook narrator and be like, A... Is for Apple. <laughs> and you're getting paid to do this. <laughs> B is for Bat. <laughs> they didn't I want orders. that job. Can I get the audio books for kids? <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> I don't think they make those. <laughs> uh, what kind of pup are we looking to get? Um, I want a Great Dane and Mike wants a cow dog. Yeah. So uh, they'll be best friends forever. And yeah, I don't know if we're going to puppy, cow, dog, or if we're going to get one uh, already trained. I don't know. I'm kind of tossed back and forth on that one because, like, you know, um, do I have time to train a dog? Number no. one. <laughs> no. But so, we have to train have, the Great Dane. But I have seen people that have gotten, like, the uh, the six month old, like, started cow dogs. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they know a lot of what they're doing anyway. So, um, you know, you just, yeah, you give it something to do, you give it a job, and let it go. You know, 
the Great Dane, I don't know what the job would be of your Great Dane. Now, every time I see a picture of a Great Dane, they're lying around and they're lazy. That's perfect. <laughs> um, oh, I can get a corgi. Do I have any rats? No. I've never seen a rat in my life, like in real life. I mean, I've seen them on TV. Have yeah. you ever seen a rat? No. i seen a big mouse. I could have called it a rat. Did you see any rats when you lived in Denver? Does Denver have rats? I never really saw a rat down there either, but I wasn't like hanging out in back alleys or anything either. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, whatever kind of cow dog we get, like has to be good with kids, obviously, and I don't want something that's going to herd the children. So The only thing I've heard about Danes is that they, they drool a lot. I'm talking about cow dogs. Oh, you're talking about cow dogs. But yeah, great Danes drool. Danes drool, and they don't live very long. I just want to do it once. Yeah, I just want to do it once. I just want to experience a great day once. That's all. Okay. We'll I think we're day. a... I love Lexi, like, and I, I loved having a lab. She has some annoying habits, but all dogs do. Um, but I'm not, like, super loyal to a breed. Like, I want to shop around a little bit. Experience different personalities. That's not, yeah, I mean, yeah, your mom, she had, uh, what is that, Chesapeake Bay Retriever. And then she got another one. So she, that Daisy died. She said, give me another one of those. Yeah, now she, they, she has them. another one. Yeah. I don't know. I, you know, some people do get attached to like certain breeds of animals, you know, yeah. and they stick with them. You know, we have Angus cows. We're sticking with Angus cows. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, like the, uh, you know, sticking with the one type of dog. I, I get it. Like, you know, some people really like that breed of dog and that yeah. that personality that those dogs have and stuff like that. You know, I, Lexi is a great dog and she's a yellow lab. And she's, you know, super friendly and she doesn't mess with chickens or anything like that, which is nice. But yeah, she has some habits that are kind of annoying. Mm -hmm. So you can either go with that again or you can roll the dice and see yeah, what other I mean, annoying I mean, we'll habits get you can get. Because every dog has an annoying yeah. habit. Every person has an annoying Everything in the entire world has an annoying habit. Person, dog, rat. Rats have more, you know, annoying habits. Yeah, than I mean, I think and there's downsides to a Great Dane. I saw somebody said they leave cow-sized droppings in the yard. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah. The cows have been in the yard, so... Yeah. Aaron likes to hit those with the lawnmower. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, we'll deal with it. Um, we'll uh, we'll just roll the dice. Try. It. I think we'll get a lab again at some point. But, yeah, okay. I just want to try something different. So, mm -hmm. um, And you're not, like, sold on... Any certain type of cow dog? Yeah. No. Gilbert had blue healers. They were not super, they were one person dogs. And that, I we cannot have a one person dog. Like, we have to have a family dog. Like, this dog is going to, it's not just going to be a working dog. It will most likely be in our house because the kids will not allow it to just stay in the shop. Mm -hmm. So, it's going to have to get along with another dog because we'll still have, like, a house dog. And it has to get along with kids. And there can be no herding of the children in the house or in the yard. So... I can't, I can't deal with hurting or nipping at the kids. Yeah. Like, no, that's not. They're too little. If they were older, it would be a different situation. But Lincoln's three. And, like, most likely, Lexi's not going to be with us much longer. So I can't have a four-year-old and a dog that herds children. Well, I don't know. <laughs> you can keep him in line. <laughs> he won't leave the yard. Might be a good thing. Huh. I think you should just teach the Great Dane to chase cows. Well, I could just ride the dang Great Dane and just herd cows that way. We're great with the calves. It's like bigger than the calves. The calves might think it's a cow. <laughs> Where's the udder on this thing? That's not it. I would like to have a German Shepherd at some point. Like, that is a dog that I would like to have. Um, for sure. We have three kids, Nick. Yeah. I'm just reading comments here. It's okay. Uh, if somebody said Great Dane's tails hurt. Yeah, Lab's tails, man. They hurt too. Yeah, Lexi's a like a ninja with her tail, man. Oh, the she, kids. She can come were... around behind you and smack you. Knock. <laughs> she'd knock the kid. She every one of the kids has been knocked down by oh, the tail. Oh, when the kids are like, like you know, when they first started like getting upright and they were like tail height. Oh, it was like a rough like six months until their like chins got above like where the tail. Like oh, the the eyes always. The eyes and the mouth. Lincoln got a black eye for Christmas. That was oh, fun. Yeah, he did get a black eye. <laughs> that was, that was courtesy of Mackenzie, though, because they were playing leapfrog or some damn thing. And uh, Lincoln mm -hmm. caught a knee to the eyeball and came upstairs. And that was Saturday. 
He came off the stairs. And he was crying. Big old shiner. Like, my eye hurts. And I was just holding him and getting him calmed down. And then I uh, like looked at him and I was like, oh, <laughs> black guy. <laughs> yeah, that was so, pretty funny. It's nice and yellow. <laughs> uh, anyway, moving right along. <laughs> we beat up our kids. Uh, you ever seen deer on your property? Yes, we've seen lots of deer on our property. And lots of deer animal. and antelope. My eye is watering. <laughs> you can take contacts out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> if I take my contacts out, then I'm not going to be able to see the screen at all. And I'm having trouble seeing it now because my eyes are watering. <laughs> uh, do you brand your cattle? That one from Sean Roberts. Yes, we do. Uh, we brand a videos at, about uh, that. What's that? There's a couple videos about branding. There is, actually. Um, next, uh, next, this next video that we have coming out on Sunday is actually going to be our year-end review video. Um, right now, and here's something weird that's been going on, but we uh, our, our views are down a little bit, and people have been telling me that they haven't been getting notifications. So I'm not really sure what's going on with that. But we do have a new video coming out Sunday, so make sure that you get in and watch it if you can, and uh, be sure to share it and all that kind of good stuff. It's going to be our year-end review video. It's going to be a little bit longer, but we're going to take a look back at some of the cool things that have happened this year. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, some things that we have coming up for next year and uh, some of the numbers. You know, we're going to talk a little bit about the YouTube numbers and how many comments we've answered and how many new subscribers we have and stuff like that and uh, try to get you guys, uh, you know, a little behind the scenes view of that kind of stuff too. So that should be a lot of fun. That's coming out on Sunday, 7 a.m. Mountain Time, and you'll be able to check that out. Uh, if I get it done a little bit early, then I'm going to release it to Patreon early too. So. Yeah, you're trying to get ahead this week. I am trying to get ahead. And work on drywall, and we had Christmas. Yeah, jeez. Exactly. Yeah. Um, from Alex, uh, have you guys ever had any problems with trespassers? Who were you telling our trespasser story to just this week? Oh, uh, Axe Family stopped by. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a YouTube channel. They stopped by this last week, and uh, they asked us that question about trespassers. Yeah. And we told some very interesting stories about mm -hmm. some trespassers who were doing things they shouldn't be doing and got caught. And, uh, you know, little things like that. We haven't had any major problems, but uh, occasionally there's somebody gets lost or claims they got lost. Yeah. Usually during, during hunting usually season. Usually during hunting season. Yeah, that's <laughs> when our big problem with, with, hunt, with uh, trespassers usually happens. So, <sighs> Are you reading comments here or what? I am, yeah. Do <laughs> you, you have anything interesting? Um, no. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite part of living on the ranch from Derek? Uh, the favorite, our favorite part, and, and somebody, well, my favorite part actually, is the ability to just go and do something. You can, it's, it's, I guess, you know, it equates to going to work, but I can go to work and I can just do whatever kind of strikes me that day, I guess, you know, that I can. Yeah, I can, there's necessities to be done, but also, I mean, like, we get to pick and choose what we do. We don't yeah, have pretty much. If I want to go drive five miles back for no reason, I can. I can just mm -hmm. go hang out and and, uh, and kind of do the things. So. I was thinking about like um, the gardens and like, not like the career that I picked for myself, but I mean, it's somewhere oh, no. along the way, like this is what I chose and like, you know, work really hard at it. Um, and I'm probably just thinking about it because it's winter time and I hate winter. Um, I love working outside. Mm -hmm. Like I think working outside every day in the summer, like I think that's like changed me as a person. I miss the outside. I love the fresh air. I hate winter. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's rough this time of year for me. Like, I just kept thinking, like, I'm so glad we're through the shortest day of the year. We just got to get through, like, January and February. And, like, not that March and April are nice, but, like, we're getting there. Like, yep. it'll be spring soon. <laughs> exactly. Um, any uh, tractor repairs for the project board? Yeah, those are coming up this winter. Uh, we do go through, change the oil and everything, do the basic tractor maintenance. Uh, you know, the, the thing with tractors now, you know, Tractor repairs now kind of come down to, oh, I have to replace a sensor, which I have to do on the 6420. Um, what sensor is that? Uh, it's a oil pressure, hydraulic oil pressure sensor is bad. Every once in a while, I've got the sensor. I just need to put it in. But, you know, it, the repair thing really isn't, I don't have tractors that have major issues. So mm -hmm. I'm not replacing, you know, anything crazy. But uh, we will be going through the tractors and doing some work on them over the winter. So keeps me in business. Um, you gotta scroll down. Do you tag your cows? We sure do. Tag all of them. That's how we keep track of who's who. Um, Stephen, do you creep feed your calves? Yeah, we sure do creep feed the calves. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we've got uh, four calves actually in the barn. Our bottle calves that we didn't sell uh, are in the barn and they're on creek right now too. Um, it's so <laughs> awkward when we stop. And I know, it's crazy. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's going in the high tunnel? William wants to know. Um, lettuce, Salanova lettuce from Johnny's. Um, spinach, radishes, um, kale. Um, I planted scallions and carrots, and they got overtaken by grass. We had a lot of grass grow in there for uh, some weird I reason. I do not know where it came from. Like, I've never had grass in the high tunnel, and, like, I have. Like, it's nicer than our yard grass. Where did so, all that come from? I have no idea where it came from. It looks like I, like, seeded grass inside the high tunnel. Um, so, yeah, that's a problem that needs to be around. But actually, that, that does kind of work out because now it becomes, like, a cover crop. Yeah, it's easy. yeah, I can till it in and stuff. But I have crops there that I don't want to lose. But my next video is going to be about the high tunnel. I need to do some um, more seeding now that we're through the shortest day of the year. And just Oh, do my gosh. Like Thank God. I, I'm so tired of the short days, and it's, it's like, awful. dark at 4.30. Sunset's, um, like, 4.30 for us. I know. It's <laughs> ridiculous. I hate it. <laughs> Uh, JB Weld, thank you for the other t another ten dollars. Favorite videos for the Costa Ranchy and the Farm Bill one. Thank you. <laughs> Favorite videos Costa Ranching and the Farm Bill one. You know the, the mini documentary educational side of things that uh, uh, we kind of throw in there. I really didn't start doing that until Costa Ranching was probably mm -hmm. the first one I did, and that video was basically brought about because people wanted to have, they wanted that information and trying to figure out a way to, um, to get that across without just opening up, you know, our checkbook and being yeah, like, you know, here's it, how much we make. The cost of engine essentially came from people who kept asking us like how much we make and like, it was a way to, like in all reality, it was a way to like deflect that question without like right. being Right. The, the big thing about the cost of ranching is that, um, I've had universities contact me about that video. I uh, have had high school teachers, agriculture teachers, all, all kinds of, you know, people in the educational community contact me about that video. And, you know, although I made that video very much like right here, like our costs as we are right here, um, you know, you can take our um, six to $800 an acre land price and where you have to have 35 acres for a cow calf pair. Now you take that down to Georgia and you're paying $10,000 an acre but you're still, but now you're only, you know, you need two acres per cow. Mm. So it, it's all very, it's kind of funny how it all, it all connects. And, and the price all, of land really comes down to what you can produce off that acre. Yeah. You know, and it's so. all like, we got a lot of comments too. Like, you know, we pay six to $800 for an acre around here. It takes 35 acres to run a cow, but where it only takes two acres, it's going to cost you a lot more per acre. So it's all about that animal unit and how many, acres per cow mm -hmm. and and all kind of like the math all kind of works out the same where you're at kind of like there's going to be some variances and stuff but yeah yeah uh from derek how do you become a well-rounded rancher working with equipment problems cattle livestock well you kind of have to that's that's the name of the game uh, i think anybody who's done it will tell you that you learn by doing yeah a lot I of mean, times i mean everything i know about plumbing i learned by doing uh you know electrical you know, that kind of stuff. One of the things that I've found that, that's really handy is to surround yourself with people that know what they're yeah, doing. Make friends I, with contractors. Make friends with electricians. Make friends with plumbers. Good night, Melissa. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Uh, make fu make friends with uh, Gary down the road who's you know, has equipment and, and does landscaping and digs holes for a living. Um, it, it, you know, it all, does, uh, it all does work out. But you, as you do it, you're going to really find that... Um, you've got hidden talents. I think everybody does. When we came here uh, directly from from corporate jobs, like I didn't have uh, any clue what I was doing. In fact, a good example is the very first time I ever drove through the ranch, uh, Gilbert was sitting in the, in the passenger side with me and we were going down the, uh, the main road through the ranch and I was just zooming right along and uh, I, I hadn't driven on that much, that many dirt roads, you know, so Gilbert, you know, was like, you better slow down. We're going to start fishtailing and sure as, sure as hell, we started fishtailing and everybody grabs the, the, you know, the handles and, uh, but I mean, as you, you know, as you do it, you're going to learn. So now I know that, you know, I can't drive 80 down that road. Well, um, just in certain spots. Just in certain spots. Yeah. Drive 80 down um, but you know, there's, it, it's, it's just like that as you, 
Um, as you come up on a water problem, if you're out of your chicken house and all of a sudden you have a broken water line, if you have water in your chicken house, um, you're going to fix it. And you're going to figure out the best way that works for you to fix it, whether you use sharp connectors or quick fits or you're out there uh, with, uh, with solder and copper. Whatever works for you, that's what's gonna that's what's gonna get you through it. Just like Erin, she had to figure out a lot of this gardening stuff. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I thought I knew how to do a lot, but I didn't. And I mean, you just learn, you know, essentially by fire. Um, Brian Yonker asked um, why we kept the bottle caps. You know, why did I keep them? They were, um, super they were small. small. They were small at the time, so it was better off to keep them. And then we're just privately selling them. We actually have a neighbor that's gonna buy a couple of them. Uh, and another neighbor list, but they're they're gone. They're sold. They're just um, still here. They're just still here. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, it's just worked out well that way. Um, Jonathan, are there grants available to young adult adults for buying and starting farms? Yeah, there's new farmer funding. Um, check your farm service agency or your NRCS office mm -hmm. or your local extension office should also be able to point you in the right direction. Yep. Have you ever tried PEX for plumbing? Yeah, I like PEX. Yeah, PEX works great. I actually got pushed onto PEX because I Gilbert loved uh, PVC, which is horrible in the weather, uh, freezes and breaks. But PEX is a little bit more forgiving. So we haven't had knock on wood. We haven't had a lot of plumbing problems lately, man. No. Though for a couple of years, it's oh, like... for a couple of years, <laughs> there was like every day something was broken. Uh, uh, yeah. It took some time to kind of get some water issues taken care of. You know, our well had frozen for the house even after we moved into this house. Uh, I remember our well froze one time. Did it freeze uh, while we were yeah, just the, it was before I put the methane hut over the well, and it just had a lid, and the air got in there, or snow got in there, or something. So from a certain direction. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's been. Uh, it's been interesting. Uh, how's the the sound booth coming? Well, the sound booth is actually an office. Yeah, office and sound booth. It's still coming. If you actually go back, rewind. Uh, we had a little thing here at the beginning about it. And, it's uh, coming. Take a look at it. Eventually, one of these days, I'm going to get you guys up there, and we're going to do a little tour if I can figure out a way to do it. And Maybe there'll be a project with this video on doing drywall. Oh, I can't teach anybody how to do drywall. And the bad thing about doing drywall is that there's sure people that. that know how to do drywall that would be like, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, I run into that all the time. You know, there's, there's, there's all kinds of people out there that know more about what I'm doing than, what I, than I do. Uh, the only difference is I'm doing it here, and they're not. So, yeah. There's that. You know, I mean, I think all ranchers have to be like a jack of all trades. And it doesn't mean you're like, you're not an expert welder or anything, but like mm -hmm. you make the job work. And if it breaks, like you try a different way and you keep trying to find solutions. Um, you know, we can't afford to like send stuff to get it fixed all the time. So right. like we got to figure it yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, I can't, so. if I have, an, if I have a, a plumbing issue, nine times out of 10, I can't call the plumber. I could. But then there's a big fat bill that comes along yeah. with that. So if I can fix it myself, usually I'll try yeah, to Yeah, even it if out. it's not like the, you're not a master plumber, you didn't go to school. Is there master plumbers? Yeah. Probably, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you don't you do not do it every day. Like, it's probably not going to be perfect. But, like, if it gets the job done, like, we're fine. You yeah. know? I know how to shut off the water. That's the first part of being a great plumber. <laughs> how to turn off the water. You're great at fixing plumbing. I mean, you do do a lot of plumbing. Like, in the spring, when we turn on wells... <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of plumbing. So much plumbing. Yeah, you... so many trips to Home Depot. <laughs> Gilbert used to buy plumbing parts. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have a barn full of plumbing parts. Bins full of plumbing parts. Do you think we can ever find what we need? No. You know, we have plumbing parts. They're just not organized. <laughs> so it's like I know I have a fitting in here somewhere, and it's nowhere. Yeah. Uh, cow farts. How are cow farts? Cow farts are really funny, if you ask me. Uh, <laughs> you get behind a cow that's running along who has some gas, and. Uh, you're in for a. You're either gonna <laughs> laugh while you're doing it, or you're gonna, or you're gonna cry because it's. It, I think it, the first couple of years I probably would have cried. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, it was a big, a big adjustment. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, now it is funny. <laughs> Any updates uh, from Kyle? Any updates on the ranch roundup? Uh, well, I see. I can't tell you these up. There's some good stuff happening with the ranch roundup that I can't tell you about. See, so Kyle, dang you. Um, uh, let's We're going to finalize some plans after the first of the yeah, year. That's first of the year. We do have uh, anybody who has signed up for the Ranch Roundup. Anybody? Okay, first of all, if you don't know what I'm talking about, the Ranch Roundup happens August 24th right here at the ranch. Uh, we're selling tickets for it, 25 bucks a piece. You get yourself here and you get to hang out for the day on the ranch. Uh, we're going to have a uh, farm to table dinner uh, with or afternoon dinner. I guess it would be dinner time. Um, that uh, is going to be beef from right here on the ranch. Aaron's going to. Uh, whip up some carrot cake and God knows what else. And uh, we're going to have an old-fashioned barbecue. Uh, it's come as you are, so you don't have to be dressed up. Did I just hit you? Mm -hmm. Sorry. 
Um, you don't have to be dressed up or anything, but uh, we're going to have some fun. We're going to have some roping lessons going on. Hopefully, if I can find a new roper, because my roper moved to Texas. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Hannah, my <laughs> horticulturist friend, and her husband are moving to Texas. So yeah, and very, he's a championship team roper, so he won't be teaching roping. I'm very <clears> upset <throat> about Hannah leaving. But we're going to find uh, we're going to find somebody else and do some roping classes. We're going to play some horseshoes. Uh, of course, we're going to have tours around the place. We're going to have some old tractors. Uh, what else are we going to do? We're going to have all kinds it's of fun. It's a work in progress. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's very many. If you have ideas for the Ranch Roundup, feel free to send them to us. Uh, you can go to our website, uh, rwyomonglife.com, and there's a contact form right there on that first page, or you can click on contacts. And or, that's where you buy your tickets, too. And that's where you buy your tickets, too. And some nice glasses. I didn't, I'm not using a glass. Why didn't you get a glass? I don't know. I just got a plain one. I set one aside for myself. I don't know if I set one I aside for so. you. Show them the glass. Yeah, this is the R Wyoming Life uh, whiskey glass. If anybody is having a, a drink with me tonight, I do appreciate you guys getting one of these. These are really nice glasses. It kind of surprised me how nice they are. Yeah, you never know when you order stuff off the internet. Mm -hmm. um, with that, we have some uh, travel coffee mugs, some hats, yeah. and honey. Yeah, you, you can, can buy check. honey on our um, honey from right here on the ranch from our local beekeeper. Yep. On rwyomonglife.com. Yeah, you can uh, you can check it out. Uh, we're gonna have lots of fun. And uh, I'm trying to, if you do have suggestions on stuff that, uh, activities, uh, things that we can do, uh, you know, hayride, uh, that, you know, so we don't want anybody to get killed. Oh, um, yeah, hayride's an iffy situation. Yeah. You got to think about liability, man. <laughs> you yeah. put 200 people on the ranch and, like, someone's going to get hurt. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to have a first aid <laughs> We're station. We're going to have a waiver. Everyone's signing a waiver. <laughs> <laughs> we do have uh, uh, <laughs> A, uh, a nurse coming. We have a, we have a nurse that's actually helping with the yeah, planning yeah, of it. Yeah, so, yeah. Thanks, Jimmy. So we'll, we'll have a nurse's station <laughs> probably set up. So uh, it'll it'll be a lot of fun. We'll get a chance to hang out. We'll have and, a hoeing contest. Um, Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds horrible. Probably something super weedy. <laughs> uh, we are. Uh, this is from. Uh, uh, Hi, Unita. Unita Rancher, Rancher, part of Wyoming. We're uh, over by Gillette, northeast corner. Gillette's the closest town to us. Uh, the other thing that we're doing really cool during the Ranch Roundup is the day before the Ranch Roundup, if you're coming in early, uh, we are doing a live stream, just like this, but we are doing it with a live audience. And uh, audience members are going to be able to come up, get on camera, ask questions, uh, hang out with us, come and sit down with us, and I, I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to have multiple cameras, we're going to have a director, a producer, it's going to be, <laughs> a director. we're going to have a Dave who's going to get thrown into all kinds of crap that he doesn't know what to do. And, and I'm going to have about and a nurse Tammy. And nurse Tammy, <laughs> who's going to, you know, be able to help us out. I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun because, yeah. you know, it's just going to be a chance for us to hang out. And uh, my biggest worry about the entire thing is that somebody's going to go away unhappy because they didn't get to hang out with us enough. And uh, we're trying to figure out how to do all that, yeah. you know, all at the same time. 200 people is a lot of people, but... Um, we're definitely going to meet and greet with everybody and get a chance to hang out and uh, answer questions and give people little, you know, looks around the ranches and the barns, whatever else. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. So that's yeah. coming up August 24th. You can check out tickets for that on uh, rwyomonglife.com. End of pitch. All right. Um, what non-farm animals do you have on your ranch? That's from Keaton. Uh, non-farm animals. We have a yellow lab. We have a yellow lab. Everything else is a farm animal. Yeah. Pigs, chickens. Pigs, chickens. I mean, geese. Geese. Yeah, that's pretty much it. We have a yellow Cows. lab that's not, he's, she's not a working dog, so. Yeah. Would a cow dog be considered a ranch animal then? I would think so. Well, heck. Wouldn't it? I guess. I don't know. A Great Dane would not be considered mm -hmm. a ranch animal. You gotta think what their purpose is. Yeah. I don't know what the purpose of a Great Dane is yet, so. Kids, we have kids. Yeah, we have kids. <laughs> They're non-farm animals. Yeah. If I you guess. see the house outside of the cone of cleanliness, mm. it's like the pig bin. <laughs> yeah, um, we do have the horses, and technically, I mean, they are farm animals, but we don't use them on the ranch. They're more, they're just recreational type animals, so they're yeah. not technically uh, a working working horse. No. You know, Iro's too big to do anything, so a mother-in-law. <laughs> That's me, Langster. <laughs> I think it's funny. <laughs> oh, thank Ivan, you, Dan, for Ivan answering can, that. Ivan, are you coming to the ranch roundup? He said he can help with the audio. Oh, with live video. Perfect. Yeah. Are you guys coming? Did you buy tickets? I don't know if they're coming or not. I, I'd have to. Now he's coming. <laughs>
Yeah. All righty, guys. Uh, we are past our time for tonight, and it's not long before the guy with the cane comes out and grabs me and pulls me off. So, um, the guy with the cane? haven't you ever seen that? The guy with the cane comes and pulls me off. He's the same guy that tosses me the uh, the saddlebag thing. <laughs> Yanks, yeah. It's he's the and then they start playing that music. They're long winded uh, speakers at the Oscars. Da, da, oh yes. Da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> and they end up kicking you off. Thanks, everybody, for coming out tonight. I really do want to thank our moderators. Uh, Bill the Tractor Guy is here. Uh, Ron Connors is here. And I think that's it. Will, oh, William. Dunn William Dunn is here tonight, too. So thank be sure to, uh, to tip your moderators on the way out as they're, as they're booting you out the door. And uh, we will be back again in two weeks on Thursday, but be sure to check us out on Sunday for our next video. It is going to be our year-end wrap-up. Uh, we're going to take a look at what we have done and what we will do all coming up in the future. So we really do appreciate all you guys hanging out with us. And until we see you again, have a great week. And happy New Year. And a very happy New Year. You'll see him before then. I will Sunday. see him before New Year. But uh, now you screwed up my thing. You, you ruined my, my flow, my vibe. Have I'm a great so week, sorry. and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Ranch Talk Live. Please subscribe and join us as we continue to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Special thanks to our moderators and the members of the Barn Owls, our special advisory group that helps us behind the scenes. If you'd like more from the ranch, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on our weekly podcast, Beyond the Ranch, available wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Don't forget to check out All Things Agriculture, a special Facebook group where you can ask questions and learn about agriculture all over the world. Until we see you again on Sunday, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.